gaming bets. Online betting for every eSports fan. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, CSGO and Overwatch, StarCraft 2, the choice is yours. Express bets for multiple matches or live bets on the game you are watching right now. Know your way around Dota 2? Make a prediction for picks and bans. Playing CSGO? Guess the number of rounds in a certain match. Daily quests for all participants and all the best choice of payment systems. More than 600,000 users have already made their bets on the spectacular matches since 2011. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. Game number four, what could be the final game in this best of five series to determine who is going to be going to the Dota Pit LAN Finals is about to start. The draft just now getting underway with myself, Capitalist, going to be joined by CC and C. CC, Secret's been looking pretty good in game number two and three. Do you think um, more of that just comes down to Team Secret? They just look like a, a better team execution in the game, or do you think there's a bit of a draft lead for them as well? Um, I think there have been some slight draft leads, but Seeker's also just been playing a lot cleaner, I think. Um, more cohesive, they've known what they needed to do from the very beginning and like made sure they did that. Um, where Slipside, I feel like they have uh, they have good team cohesion and they have good team fighting and spellcasting and stuff, but just um, less structured of a game and not really um, not really so sure about like having a plan of specific things they need to do in the game. Do you think there's anything about um, Team Secrets drafts that you've seen so far in the three games that we've seen from them um, that, that stands out that you would like Flipside Tactics to deal with in one way or another, maybe a certain band that needs to come out? Or is, has the, the draft and play style from Secret been varied enough that you don't see any real obvious weaknesses? Um, I mean, mid one is typically their playmaker. They're um, the person that gets stuff done. He goes around, he makes the plays. He always comes to early fights, so maybe trying a little harder to shut down him, but they tried to do that in the game with Earth Spirit and the Batrider, and he just didn't die. He stayed super passive, played really well, had one CS. It's really like, as as, as whenever you play mid in games where you know you have an Earth Spirit just sitting there, having the mindset of being okay with having one CS is so hard. It's like really, really impressive that he was able to just sit back and not die to any of those ganks. It shows a lot of trust in his team, right? Yeah, just... uh. Just knowing this isn't a pub, he doesn't have to 1v5. Yeah. Flipside Tactics, they're going to go for the Drow Ranger first. Didn't work out for them last game. Team Secret. They're going to respond with the same opening? They will. Round two. <laughs> all right. With Spouting Head or Flipside Tactics, they're like, all right, we the, the laning phase went fine for us. Um, we really should have been able to take control of that game better. We just made a couple of mistakes, right? They, they continue to push through after they push down that tier one tower and they they stayed in that um, in that off lane a bit too long. Uh, that that was the first critical mistake. And then there were some pick offs that they shouldn't have allowed, like immediately following that fight, right? They swooped up and got the Dragonite. That that should not be a kill. That team secret should be able to easily pick up, but he was out of position. So apparently Flipside are feeling like, okay, we can have a repeat. We'll probably won't see the same exact drafts from both teams, but uh, flip side tactics are at least going to be running a Troll Ranger strat, and it's going to be comboed with an Earth Spirit. Yeah, a little bit of a different take on the draw strat this time. Earth Spirit instead of the Chen, so less, uh, less just run down buildings, more, um, more trying to find kills and then snowballing that into the buildings afterward. So far from these two picks, but not too much you can draw from just these. Yeah, maybe they're going to try and put a bit more pressure on the mid lane per your suggestion about keeping mid one down. Um, like they did in game number one, at least, when he was playing that Templar Assassin. Team Secret are going to once again ban away the puck. Probably one of the classic heroes that pair up really well with the Draw Ranger. It's an aggressive hero that gives really good disables, a nice initiator. And on top of all of that, 
he wins his lane when he's got that Drill Ranger extra damage aura coming in. It's also here you can put off lane and mm, do true. quite well, um, especially versus heroes with you know, really weak supports uh, in lane, like the Wisp and the Bounty Hunter. Um, works very well with that. And you can also turn fights around um, a hero that can rotate pretty easily. So if you know fights do go down, they can you know, maybe once again make moves on mid one if they did have that. So all around just a pretty good ban. Do you think that um do you think they should run an aggro trine lane again to abuse the weakness of these supports that Team Secret are opening with? Or is there a different way that they can abuse a Wisp Bounty Hunter opening? Um I'm not sure they may do another trine lane. That the, the aggressive trine lane wasn't like really the issue that game. Mm -hmm. Um you know, they played it well, they got a bunch of kills. Uh... Everything was going well. It's just they made some mistakes and things sort of fell apart afterwards. So I think it sort of depends on what uh, their other heroes are and what they want to do with those. But as of now, they definitely could go aggro try lane again. It's just uh, what they feel like doing. The uh, Tide Hunter and Storm Spirit are going to be ban our bans uh, this time around. Flipside Tactics replacing. Uh, oh, I can't remember what the the band was. They obviously banned Storm Spirit both times in a row, but. Uh, this time, that pesky Tidehunter obviously forever had a huge impact in that last game. It was very disruptive to the Drill Ranger pushes. Every single time they had a Ravage, they contested the, the tower push that was happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forever is, is very, very good on the Tidehunter. Probably one of the few people that picks that hero, you know, very, very frequently. He goes to Gush early on, plays it sort of a different style than most people, and it's very effective. Oh, the Life Stealer. That's what it was. Uh, Flipside Tactics don't ban away the Life Stealer. Um, in favor of the Tide Hunter and Team Secret will get into their hands. So if they can get an off laner that gets a pretty decent blink dagger timing, I'm thinking Axe, right? It's you've got that kind of thanks to the jungle a guaranteed blink timer with uh, the Infest. Or do you think Slardar is good enough in this game? A little less reliable on the blink dagger, but better synergy with the Life Stealer. Um, I'm not sure. They 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 kind of lack lane push right now. Like they have um, the bounty hunter, they get involved with the life stealer, so they may end up trying to pick a greedier off laner, um, and or not necessarily greedier, but a hero that can push out waves, a hero that scales with farm better, um, mm -hmm. and have this life stealer get active early on with the bounty hunter, and have the off laner pay, play more of a a farm ish role. Because as of now, like their only way they really can defend the towers is if they jump them beforehand. If they ever get to a tower. Um, they they can't just spam the waves though, so they have to jump them and fight them. There's no there's no def you know spamming waves out at this point. What what off laners can really do that for you? Uh, there's like timber saw, but what else? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was trying to think. Um, there there's not really that much. So what you know what they probably have to do is just play a very uh, a very you know just jump people and have their mid be more of a, uh, a farming hero and get lanes out again. Um, okay. You know, like some, something like the bottom. That's probably what they're gonna have to do because. You know, like you said, there's just not really that many heroes that can um, that can farm from the offline shovel waves other than the Timber Saw. But Timber Saw versus Drow and Faceless Void seems quite bad. Yeah, yeah, you, you obviously are going to have a real hard time in that offlane uh, against that. Is there any chance we can see a Timber Saw mid? There's the axe for Team Secret, the guaranteed blink dagger timing. Yep, another way to move the life stealer around. Very good for Shao. She kind of just kills herself. And flip side tactics. They got themselves the Faceless Void as their offlaner, potentially mid. We've seen, obviously, the Faceless Void can run kind of um, anywhere. It means a hero that can survive if he is forced into a 1v1 against the Axe. If an aggro trialing comes out from Flipside Tactics, he doesn't immediately lose the lane and get pushed out, but he won't win out in CS, that's for sure. Going for the Bane. Ooh. Very rarely seen without a Marana, that's for sure. It's a, it's a rare enough support with Marana, and even rare without, but it does at least give you the control over the Lifestealer through Rage. Yeah, sort of harkening back to the old uh, Seven Mad days, where they'd always pick Bane and pot him on flip side mm -hmm. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Good versus the Life Stealer. Um, you know, you can sleep the sleep to Axe if he goes in, or sleep the person he jumps on to stop them from hitting each other, or from hitting the Axe. Um, you know, the grip always very good versus the Life Stealer, draining his mana as well. So if you can grip him and stop him from getting the, you know, draining his mana, so he can't rage, um, can also be very very big. 
So, so when he jumps in and calls, right, that one second of invulnerability stops them from attacking the axe, right? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know if, if the... Will they actually... Because it's like two seconds, right? And the, the second of invulnerability is one second. If he does it right away, what do you think happens? Can he actually still still have the 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 rage go out after the invulnerability is his fade and then what somebody takes a, a nightmare to the face off of that i'm not sure hmm. either way the timing is obviously very specific and unlikely to happen more likely that one second invulnerability will save a lot of damage from some of these allies the last man coming out we need some sort of mid for team secret and potentially a mid for Flipside Tactics. We'll have to see how the lanes match up. Team Secret got to ban away the Bat Rider. And Flipside Tactics waiting on their pickup. Team Secret, I guess, afraid of initiation, right? It's always important if you have a Lifestealer. Uh, as we saw from that Lifestealer Slard Art game, you always be want to be the ones uh, setting the initiation, getting the, the jump on a hero and making a 4v5. Or at least being in a position to where you can uh, you can save the hero that they go on to life so they become sort of stranded. Mm -hmm. Ember Spirit is a ban away. So a scaling mid doesn't have the greatest wave clear. You said that's still important. Do you have an idea for a mid hero yet for a secret? The Storm Spirit is banned, so that's not it. They may have actually gone for the Ember Spirit. Uh, he's played that in the past. Um, not too recently, but you know, reasonably uh, recent. They may go for the Tinker. Okay. Um, sort of depends on what Flipside picks here. If they pick something that is too good at rotating uh, with the Earth Spirit onto the Tinker and shutting it down early. Um, Timber is not great here. They they may end up actually going for the Tinker. Is the Invoker still in the pool? Um, is there any not... chance uh, a more farming mid can be picked up like Alchemist, or is that just too slow against a Jura Ranger? Um, I think it sort of depends on what Flipside picks here for their mid, if the sure. Alchemist can lane, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, we'll know in five seconds anyway. Flipside Tact is going right down to the wire, and it's going to be a Queen of Pain, a very aggressive and active mid laner for Flipside. Yeah, they're, once again, their lineup is this very execution-based. Um, almost all the heroes are burstable in call, so... If they can get the jump, then they can definitely take these fights. They have the damage to do it. But if the you know the axe ever calls Qua, that's sort of the issue with that here. You make one mistake and you just evaporate. It's sort of like a tinker. What's um, what else is appealing about this Queen of Pain? We see the lane dominance. Obviously, he's got Jorah Ranger. He matches up really well against most mids. But what else is really appealing about a, a Queen of Pain? Because it's not a hero that's being picked up a whole lot. Uh, I mean, it's another range tier, so you can attack into the chrono. It's extra damage. You know, you can throw the ult into the chrono as well because they are sort of lacking damage in chrono. They have a lot of disables. They have the earth spirit stuff, the grip, the chrono, but not that much damage. So the quapult gives them something to throw into the chrono, so they can actually like pick off people instead of just having a bunch of disables and no damage. Mm -hmm. Well, our last pick for secret is going to be a uh, scaling mid in the invoker. So. Secret kind of looking like a lineup that is going to hit really hard in the mid game, but around that 15 minute marker, they're definitely going to need some space to be created by the Axe, Lifestealer, and Bounty Hunter combination. That, for me anyway, is really going to. That, that seems like very specific, right? If Axe needs his Blink Dagger and they need those rotations to be successful and start getting track kills, otherwise, they're going to be incredibly pushed in by Flipside Tactics in that 15 to 25 minute marker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's for, for sure. The life stealer um, it rotated quite early on in the other life stealer game, so you know whatever he's level six, he may not even wait for the armlet and just go gank around with the bounty hunter, try and make moves on this trial ranger. Um, the axe will probably start jungle, and they may look for some sort of timing where the axe hits level five, level six, something like that in the jungle. The life stealer is six, and the t uh, axe TB's up top, sort of baits, and they do some sort of rotation with the bounty hunter. They may look for some move like that uh, to be their first move while the um, the wisdom maybe catches up, or the invoke, you know, while the invoker farms does stuff with Sunstrike. So we'll have to see. Five man smoke up by flip side to start things off. Not going for the early TPs like before to try and get vision down. Uh, Puppy, he's already on his way with an early TP out and uh, getting the very aggressive ward that's going to be able to see the rotations of perhaps the Bane. They, it looks like they managed to scout out Puppy, and they will manage to get the dust on him. Nightmare him up. 
surround the poor puppy man and beat him down before the dust expires. That'll be a free first blood for Roger. Uh, definitely a nice start for the Earth Spirit, getting us some early XP. He can get to his boots quicker or the wind lace or whatever, so he can, you know, it's a little bit easier to hit those rolls. I have the glitch where I can only see from one person's perspective, so I'm restarting to go there real fast. <laughs> All right, good luck. Um, secret. How do they want to actually set these lanes up? Are they are they because it, it's looking like they're going to actually put the life stealer and wisp up at the top lane um, against the dro and bane? Is this is this intentional? Do are they are they actually down to put the life stealer against a dro ranger lane just to be able to give the axe the one v one against the void? Or do you think this is uh, a misguided attempt to dodge a dro ranger uh, aggro tri lane? Um, I think they actually might be trying to dodge. Um, they could be just sort of sacking the life stealer a bit and relying on the the axe getting a quick point dagger, but I don't know how well that goes uh, down on the bottom line because if the earth spirit rotates, they can get kills in this axe if uh, Void chips them down a little bit. So I'm not sure. This may be uh, maybe an attempt at dodging the lanes, but let's see how this top lane goes. A Bane Drow definitely beats a life stealer Wisp, so. Yeah. Hey. For, for sure, two ranged heroes against the life stealer with draw ranger aura. I, I'm I'm just surprised because the reason I asked that question, I didn't actually assumed. Hey, you know, you've got uh, defensive tri lane. I thought in my head, and uh, axe would just go jungle if the tri lanes don't match up against each other. You know, that for me seems ideal. But um, we'll see if secret rotate out of this top lane. If so, we know they're attempting to dodge. If not, if they actually stick through it, then that means they're just putting everything on Forev and saying, we really want you to get that Vanguard Blink Dagger nice and early, so we're gonna sack a Life Stealer's farm pretty heavily to, to get you to that point. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, another benefit of that is the Bounty Hunter can help out more mid, as opposed to if they just put the Axe Jungle and then did the Life Stealer with safe lane, they could, um, they could put the Axe Jungle and have the Bounty Hunter sap top lane, but this Invoker will be sort of left off dry, so... He's still not having a great landing stage, but I guess that's the, uh, the price they're paying. The roll comes in, kick into the Tier 1 tower. Tame My Wild's gonna take a lot of damage. Fairy Fire popped, but Tame My Wild easily stays alive, and Puppy is rather ineffective in comparison to that initiation of the Earth Spirit. Yeah, he missed a roll a little bit earlier. They almost got the kill with the uh, the Shadow Strike tick as he was walking away, but not quite, and now picking up the kill. So Invoker, once again, that one CS number seems to be very magical for mid one. Um, Puppies going to rotate up to the top lane. Not sure if they can really do anything with Life Stealer, Wisp, and a Bounty Hunter, but... Maybe they'll get one of the flip side heroes out of position and MP will be able to close that distance. He's already getting close to Van's core, but look where Roger's at. He ran back to the base and TP's in. He might be able to turn this one around. Van's core having a hard time. They're going to go straight for the Wisp. Should be able to get that kill too. The roll misses, but Van's core is getting away with a sleep on a puppy. He'll get back to the tier one tower. Pylai dies, still being hunted. Healing south up and both supports will stay alive. Yeah, this lane definitely going... Definitely going pretty okay for Secret right now. The bot lane going really well for the Axe. Um, over 10 CS up. Some of those neutrals, so not that good. But starting to cut the wave now. So behind the tower, farming this camp, then farming the hard camp. Just rinse and repeat. And it's just over time, just going to start pressuring this void. He's going to run out of regen. Maybe even threaten a kill. Do you think uh, the Earth Spirit's time would be better spent pressuring forever or do you just kind of like leave Shotula out there and say survive as long as you can but there's not much I can do to help you yeah at this point I think it's just uh it's too late there was maybe a small window if uh Shotula had some good trades where they could maybe do something but at this point he's just too tanky he may even go for the vanguard first uh, I find it slightly unlikely but he is having a very good start so yeah um so he's just a little too tanky to gank it's my 900 HP 3 armor and the level 3 spin there's really no way to gank him at this point. Yeah, the only way you would go Vanguard in a game, because Blink Dagger timing is so important for the Life Stealer, right? But the only way yeah. you would go Vanguard in this game is just because you're going to get Vanguard so early, and you'll still be able to get a good timing on Blink. But we'll see if Forev actually chooses to go down that route. Oop. Almost gets the call after a double spin, which would have prevented Shoshlo from healing it off with the time walk, but not quite quick enough on the fingers there. 
Yeah, if he could get some like obscenely early Vanguard time. Oh, looks like he is going Vanguard. All right, so gonna gonna go for that. This, in some ways, just puts more pressure on Ferev to um, to actually take advantage of the safe lane he's being given because it means he's not going to be online quite as early. He won't be able to make an early rotation up to top or anything like that. Uh, and if he, you know, forbid he gets shut down a little bit. Oop, Tether gets Pylai Dai some distance, but a nice double kick will be able to nail and finish off Pylai Dai. MP even takes a couple of shots as he retreats as well. Bottom lane, call goes out, Sunstrike. Looks like it was a little bit too late. Shotshlow heals it all off. Yeah, I don't know. Um, don't know about going this Vanguard. This top lane is not going that well. Uh, it was going okay early on, but now with the Drought getting the treads, getting some more levels in Precision Aura, they're starting to get zoned out pretty hard. So only the Brown Boots right now. 14 CS on both him and mid one. So this Axe is going to have to get really farmed. Oh. That does get the solo kill. So yeah, they're going for the Vanguard and making it work. Yeah, there's some, there's some farm for you. Man, just get a nice call. Gets the kill. Roger's going to have to back away from the top lane as Bounty Hunter is going to try and wrap around. Not going to give him the chance to uh, catch that kill. Now that he's got Vanguard, do you think um, do you think they should rotate the Life Stealer to bottom and Ferev can just start go jungling and doing Ancients now that he's got Vanguard? Uh, maybe. I think if they do rotate the Life Stealer down... Then they'll stick the axe in the top lane maybe and try and contest them there because they don't really have the damage to deal with a vanguard hero right now. Um, not too sure. It looks like they're gonna keep things the way they are, just have the life stealer deal with this. Um, the only issue with rotating is that this void actually starts to get some space and maybe a little bit more farm, whereas now this axe is just gonna continue to cut the waves and eventually get this bot tower. So I think they're gonna leave them down here until he gets this bot tower. Oh. He's not doing it the fastest right now because Shotzilla has been able to pull every single time. The choice of an early headdress is helping out his sustain, but obviously the axe is still able to fully control this lane. MP forced into a rage here at top lane as Cedoy continues to take third CS in the lane, 28 and 6, 37 and 18 on the, uh, the Queen of Pain. Obviously, with the Drow Aura, she's having a pretty decent mid lane, but hasn't managed to pick up a kill just yet. And it's going to try and rotate bottom. Shotchel has got the Chronosphere ready to go. Tame My Wild, he has an ult of his own, but can they actually take down the tanky axe? They need a little bit of extra help. Vanscor is going to be here with a pure damage. They've got the ultimate ready to go. Ferev stuck inside the trees, but gets a little bit of a spin up against the flip side heroes that's just trying to kite this hero as best as possible, holding on to the disables to make sure there is no chance at a TP out. Shotslo brought low, but not low enough for a chop, and the axe will eventually go down. It took them a while, a lot of resources being spent, but a worthy kill. Yeah, he sort of got stuck in the trees there. I think if he just ran straight down, he probably would have lived, but the co getting like three screams off, eventually chipping him down. To throw the kitchen sink at him, but eventually getting him. The cop didn't even have to use old actually, so still has that for any possible turnaround stop. Yeah, it's all they use is the chronosphere, and that's kind of. Exp I mean, you want to use the chronosphere as early as possible. This does leave Cedoy a little bit high and dry. The Bane isn't here to be able to save him, so Secret immediately try and get aggressive on him. Roger fails to get the turnaround kill onto Puppy, and it looks like he'll still die as well. Unable to have a roll for a few more seconds, and MP's just too fast with the tether to play ring around the rosy against. Yeah, that was a really, really nice rotation, realizing how much time they spent down there. Multiple TPs, the co-op's super low on mana, and no real way they could turn around top and just storming the drow. Yeah, at that point, if you're Cedoy, oh, Jesus. Okay, he's good, though. Can't dive the tier 1 tower when you're that low. MP will be force back away but when you make that kind of rotation right and you so see you show though that many heroes for that long if you're the drill ranger you kind of almost have to like jungle at that point because the enemy team's just gonna beg to dive you like that yeah there's there's almost no other move on the map they can make other than that there's nobody mid so mid one's just farming it's the only real move they can make from there with the axe set is to just storm you top so a little bit of a uh a misplay from cedoy getting caught by that but Another Looks rotation. Like still having a reasonable start. Roger is going to smoke up with Tame My Wild. As you said, they still have the Sonic Wave. He's going to be able to get the call. Not expecting this turn around. The Tame Walk goes off. And Joshua will stay pretty healthy. The kick goes down. Do they actually have a disabled? They're going to try and throw everything they have. But it's not enough. Forever. He stays alive ever so barely. 
and gets back to the fountain. A rotation fails this time around from flip side. Yeah, it's a pretty massive misplay from Roger right there. Not saving the kick or at least using the stun uh, instead of just the normal kick. So um, costing them that kill and that's all their ults used oh. for the, except for the Chrono. So. MP, that wasn't the right click you wanted to go for. Chronosphere just came back up. So they will make short work of MP this time around. A little bit of aggression at top lane gets Pylai die caught. And MP falls as well. Yeah, just getting a little bit over aggressive. Um, this early game definitely going a lot better than the last one. They have a little bit more breathing room. Not quite so much as absolutely need to death ball. They have a little bit better of a scaling mid in the quap. Um, oh. Here they is open. They almost caught him. The Shuriken's not going to go out in time. Looks like Pylai Dai will still manage to finish off the kill, though. They get Seedoy, but they're going to lose their two supports for it after a couple of rotations from Flipside. Yeah, they're really focusing on uh, getting an early advantage in these lanes, rotating around. Anytime Seeker tries to make a move, pressure the draw, pressure anybody, they turn around and make the most of it. Evoker's finally starting to catch up now after having a really, really rough, uh, rough early laning stage. Is level eight now, so he has the two forts first, and he's gonna start pressuring this tower, forcing heroes to be here. That's when everything start getting pretty rough because this Earth Spirit can't rotate around anymore. They need at least one person here to defend this tower. It will go down. I can't believe the amount of time that they're like it's ten minutes, eleven minutes in, and they're still sending that life stealer up to the top lane. Uh, I guess the lane's getting a bit easier for him as supports are rotating out. Obviously, the, the beginning of the lane was quite tough, but now he's got better sustain thanks to a um, little bit of feast and some damage as well as the infest, I guess, to be able to get back. Bounty Hunter finds a kill on Roger. Was that even... Yeah, that was a Sunstrike use, so that was a combination no, I, kill. I, I, think he, I think he missed the Sunstrike. He was fighting with the Forge Spirit, and the oh, Sunstrike really? whiffed a little bit. The Forge Spirit got him low enough to probably burst him. I'm surprised Puppy was able to do the kill alone. He will be caught, though, by Tame My Wilds, who does manage to get the successful dust and a dominating spree for Queen of Pain. I mean, she's not a hero that you're going to see a whole lot in this patch, but in order to be successful, she definitely needs to have a strong first 10 minutes, and it doesn't get much stronger than this. 4-0 and 1 so far. Yeah, Flipside have definitely, been, have definitely had a, a pretty good early inning stage, but this Invoker... Just farming up a lot. The Nakes having a decent game. Um, him and Drow sort of on par. Both died a couple of times. Tanked some uh, tanked some rotations. But this Invoker and Axe, pretty worrisome right now. Has the Vanguard and almost a blink on top of that at 12 minutes. So the pressure is mounting from flip side. But things are going to get equalized very quickly when Axe gets this blink. Yeah, flip side. Looks like they're hoping for just one more. Just one more pickoff on the Axe before he can get that blink tagger. Unfortunately, Frev, uh, I think he's kind of making that read. He's like, hey, they're, they're putting the extra effort to try and gank me. Uh, he spends a little bit more time off map and in the jungle, which means his blink dagger timing will come potentially as a surprise to Flipside. And he also dodges that gank by going over to the Ancients, farming that. The blink dagger now up for Frev, plus level 11. He gets the right kind of spin through even just the infest damage pop out and a couple of right clicks. They will very easily bring any of these heroes down to the culling blade threshold. Yeah, this is where things get sort of problematic. They know the axe is farming a blink, but they haven't seen it yet. So you're sort of in that position where it's like, does he have it yet? You aren't sure if you can pressure or not. Booker has the Midas up now, so they definitely have a whole lot of potential to win these fights. Both sides do, but... It's definitely easier for Seeker to get initiation, whereas flip side, they only have the chrono, him jumping in, the blink axe call, so I think it's definitely a little scary right now. The TP comes in, and Ferev instantly goes for the call, stalled up by the chronosphere, as well as a fiend's grip, but the damage they're outputting may not be enough. Ferev finally brought low by the pure damage combination of the Bane and the Queen of Pain. Puppy's going to wrap around, though. He's going for Seedoid. They have the Invest pop out. That's going to be your first of the bounty kills. One for one trade off on cores. Tame My Wild goes down to the right clicks of mid one. He gets enough. He's taking a lot of right click damage from the Void, as well as his damage over time from the Earth Spirit, and will eventually fall because of that. Roger continues and gets a nice kick out. A lot of damage on the Puppy. Puppy as well, they see him too, the vision's out, the dust popped on him, and they'll manage to get a third kill. Vanscore picks up the mega kill streak, and P's just hoping to be able to even out the score though, get the support kill of Roger, who unfortunately has absolutely no mana, and only one stone to his name, so he goes ahead, calls it quits, a 3 for 3 exchange, but secret, keep their tier 1 tower alive. 
Yeah, as well as I think one or maybe two of those are track kills, so definitely a secret favorite exchange. And once again, the drow going down, super poor, not even the dragon lance yet at 14 minutes. Sort of the same boat she was in last game, which is not really a position you want to be in, especially as a drow versus an axe. Uh, heroes that can jump you, it's very, very problematic. Now, Forever died in that last team fight, which is going to slow down his blade mail progression, but if they can start getting track kills for Forev, he can make a rapid progression to that item, which would be a big counter to the Draw Ranger, as well as even the magic damage coming out from the Queen of Pain. It looks like they're going to spot Team My Wild as he blinks forward. Oh, looks like they don't quite have the vision on him. Forev is just one step away, gets the call wow. almost. Team My Wild blinks himself away. Nice reactions from him once again. He's been doing okay all series long. It looks like they're going to be able to find Puppy. The relocate is coming in, though. They're going to try and fight this one out. Team My Wild has the blink up. Oh, and a Fiend's Grip. That's going to be stopped out by Forev, but he's immediately pushed back with a silence. A double stun goes down, buying Vanscore space to stay ahead of Forev. No calling blade today. Forev is just going to be kited around by Seedoy, who is now having to deal with the Cold Snap Forge Spirits combination coming out from the Invoker. Still, though, Flipside very clearly have won this fight. Invoker is forced to back away, and MP makes the long dive to find a creep wave, <laughs> which he finally does so. Yeah, Flipside is taking these fights exactly like they need to, surviving the initiation, super fast reaction time from Tame My Wild living there, and just turning it around with the ice arrow slows, the grip, all their kiting abilities. It's definitely how they need to play these fights because if they get heroes bursted during the axe call, there's not really much they can do to take the fight from there. Kick away, MP pops the rage, turns, it's still going for Roger, but he's already down low and the Chronosphere's up. Oh no, Tame My Wild actually jumps into that one. He's got the ultimate though and it looks like Puppy as well as the Life Stealer, both very dead. So Tame My Wild goes for a little bit more. He is going to be called up by the Axe though. Maybe he blinked too far. The team tried to help him out. Nice sleep, dodged a little bit of damage and now they continue to kite forever. Big new comes out, misses Pylai die, but it doesn't matter. They get that kill anyway. Forever is bought down, half HP, hoping to be able to get the shot slow, four staffed away, unable to get the calling blade. And now it's just left up to mid one, fighting up against Tame My Wild, who mans up, goes for this kill, will just barely be able to get it, but dies to the Forge Spirits in return. Mid one picks up the triple but again flip side walk away the betters of the team fight yeah they just keep jumping in with these initiations but not quite killing the person they are the person they're jumping for nice stuns from roger as well as sleeps man square just stalling these initiations and being able to turn around with the ice slows the daggers coming out non-stop Nakwap almost has the orchid so gonna make this wisp's life unenjoyable for sure 11 to 20, 17 minutes in, you could see Flipside having taken some of these fights. Do you manage to bring that track gold lead that Secret was getting, halting it, and even getting a slight gold lead for now? Definitely winning out in experience by a larger margin, though. Yeah, this Lifestealer, only the armlet right now. So, once again, if they don't get the jump and kill heroes during their uh, during the call or during, like, cold snap, something like that, then... Squap is having the Orchid now. They can easily turn around this Life Stealer with no real way to get away whenever he's Orchid, Daggered up. Secret, it seems like uh, these some of these engagements, say, for example, their choice to relocate up to the top lane isn't really playing out for them too well. Uh, it seems like Flipside just kind of has their number, the the kiting of the Queen of Pain, its Row Ranger combined with the, the Chronosphere hold is making it pretty tough for Team Secret uh, to actually make their way around in these fights. Do you think Team Secret should still be looking for these engagements and they're just not finding the right kind of initiations and they could do better in the future? Or do you think they should maybe slow down the game a little bit and try and uh, just buy a little bit more time for Invoker to uh, to get some get some little bit more farm up and Lifestealer can make a slight comeback too and, and just farm in the jungle? Oh, really? um, I think... No, oh. <laughs> poor Roger <laughs> doesn't make it out. He's just praying that the Roshan will take the kill. The sleep goes down, dodging the Sunstrike, but Lifestealer will still take the kill in the end. So a free pickup, relocate costs, but it's a track kill, so well worth it. Um, I think they definitely should still keep going for these pickups, uh, but maybe a, l a little farther away from towers, looking for people whenever they're pushed out, looking for solo here instead of taking these large-scale team fights. Because that's sort of like the best thing Flipside has right now is taking these team fights where they just kite around, 
They make them last a long time. They get a whole lot of ice arrows off a lot of screams. I take the fight that way, but if so you can get pickoffs just on solo heroes by themselves, like this co-op firing up this top lane. Um, if they get pickoffs that way, then it's definitely very advantageous for them. Not a whole lot of vision out there for Flipside right now, and I'm sure they're very wary, despite having winning, uh, been winning some of these fights recently. They knew, know the danger of this Lifestealer and Fest combination rather intimately, given what was, what, game number two in this series, where Secret took the Slardar Lifestealer combination and won that game very heavily against Flipside. So they're playing pretty conservatively without the vision to be able to see that vehicle. Now they see him in mid. They've actually got the Orchid onto Forever right now, slowing him down. But they don't have any other heroes coming in soon. So I think Team My Wild is just kind of poking, but not expecting too much out of that. Yeah, Flipside learning their lesson from the last time they played against the Lifestealer. And just playing as a group nonstop, picking really good teamfight heroes to deal with it. So that they can actually just walk around as five heroes and not giving Secret these easy soul pickoffs but looks like they're going to go for the Roshan. Yeah, trying to sneak that one in. Team My Wild is tracked up, but hasn't made its way into the Roshan pitch yet, just yet. In fact, he's going to jump forward, but he's right into the trap of Rev and MP. They get a Queen of Pain kill, and it now looks like Flipside's attempts at Roshan are going to be completely dashed. Flipside, they still trying to make a go of it, maybe because they saw the Invoker at top lane still, but without the Queen of Pain, that's probably not a great idea. Call goes out, Infest popped out, but... A pushback there of the gusts keeps them at bay from going on the draw ranger. Vanscore, he's kind of an island right now, hiding in the trees, but I doubt he'll be find, found anytime soon. Looks like Flipside still want to control this Roshan area, though. Maybe they're still going to try and go for it when Queen of Pain's back up. Yeah, those kinds of mistakes where you just go a little too aggressive on Quopper are very, very costly. It's a hero that you just die a couple of times, the hero just massively falls off because she's so squishy that if you're not ahead, that, you, know, you get caught one time by one disable, you just evaporate, and it'll be like that for the rest of the game, most probably. They've been spotted. Roger, he's going to have to make a roll out of here. Turns around, goes for the kick. It looks like Vanscorn may be caught. Forev managed to get a call onto him. Roger does go down. Forev, though, is going to be caught playing the price, though, for trying to catch that extra kill. Silenced up. Uh-oh, looks like poor MP. He may be going down. He has to armlet toggle a little bit. Does manage to get the rage off. Sleep goes down. Buying Tame My Wild a second or two. Sunstrike will land on him, taking a good amount of damage, but he still managed to blink away from the engagement secret. Bouncing around, it's going to be up to mid one to try and change this one. As you can see, a third hero is going to go down the Chronosphere. Catching Puppy, mid one, unable to find an opening for an extra kill. Flipside have two cores up plus a Bane. That looks to me like enough for them to be able to probe at Roshan. Yeah, they went on different targets there. They were chasing down the Earth Spirit Frev, having the wrong idea, thinking that they were near him, going a little too far in. And then their only initiator being down, they sort of chip away. Good one gets a couple of pick off kills with some nice plays, but they're going to get the rush on in the end. So really nice exchange for flip side. Yeah, you have to wonder if, um, first of all, if Vanscore didn't have a four staff, you know, to be able to get away because they had the vision, right? They saw at least the Earth Spirit here. They thought, OK, we're going to be able to get a free support pick off. But that him being able to force staff down that cliff and be able to get away from that situation made all the difference. And that just comes down to some of those early engagements. The fact that Flipside were the ones coming out on top meant that this Bane got himself such an early item. He's so farmed for a support like this. Uh, you know, what, what is normally looked at as kind of like a hard fight position, that's actually the Earth Spirit operating that role now. He's only sitting at 1,700, but our Bane, big old 5K net worth on him. Yeah, those early fights where they just overextended a little bit, MP getting a little too greedy for kills. Now, it doesn't even have his Deso yet, so... The net worth of flip side, definitely very, very healthy. Um, they just sort of, they just have to keep making sure they don't get caught by these axe ganks. And if they don't, then their team fight is going to slowly, but surely become very, very good. Um, already very strong with the chrono, the quap ult, um, all their spells. Just sort of hard for Seeker to take these five on five fights. Well, there is potentially a game changer. We finally have the blade mail out for the axe. So the initiation is going to be so much stronger than it was before. Sidoy is leading the charge here on this tier 1 tower push. He's got the Aegis. He wants to be the target of the Axe Lifestealer call. You could see Shachalo is sitting here on the side ready to counter-initiate at a moment's notice. Yeah, having the draw Aegis is not really... You can't really jump in. 
you have to use the rage and the life steal to burst them down and then get gripped chrono and turn everything around. This uh this orchid it certainly paid off uh quite well, but when we look at maybe it's just because Queen of Pain really hasn't been invoked too much, but say Storms here, for example, he's another very common mid here that picks up Orchid, but he always goes for the Bloodstone first. What is it about the Queen of Pain? Is it just because you're you're so focused on being able to control the tempo of this game that you need to be able to go the Orchid first in a game like this? Yeah, it's just sort of the the fact that Quap just isn't a hero that scales that well late game. Her sort of her toolkit. She's very focused. She has like a big long cooldown ult, so you want to get aggressive early on and keep that ult on cooldown, always using it for kills, sort of like the Chronosphere. Mm -hmm. um, where Storm has like ball lightning that allows him to scale really well into the late game um, and still do damage because of overcharge. Whoa, Ferev for, tries uh, to make this initiation by himself. The sleep goes down on Tame Line Wild, and now the Fiend's Grip onto Ferev. A solo YOLO play from Ferev does not pay out any dividends as he just gives away a free kill to Vanscore, who's now on a monster kill streak. Jesus. Somebody's out of the meta. He's doing quite well for himself. The Gust isn't actually going to catch the relocating heroes, though mid one actually jumps forward to catch Roger, seeing if he could get the extra kill because they know they have the Drone Ranger dead. That is just the Aegis, though, and Secret know that the rest of Flipside are on their way. It's going to be Shotslow trying to lead the way with his Blink Dagger and a Time Walk to catch the Chronosphere, and he does get him. MP. Oh, He's going to be the target. Puppy walks into it as well. They manage to get the Orchid onto MP, ensuring his death. Puppy still trying to make his way out though, but with a gem in hands and now the disable to keep Puppy in place, they easily claim a third kill. A pick off on Axe turns so much worse for Team Secret, and all they can hope is that Midwan can put the pressure on the side lanes to keep these heroes back. It looks like Midwan even thinking about going for Vanscore, but it's a bit dangerous. With the Blink Yules, he's got the tools to kill a support, but a Bane is a hero that would punish you heavily if he does manage to get that Nightmare out. Call for Rev is going to make the solo play once again. The cooling plate's not enough. The sun strike doesn't land in time. Shotzla was dead if that sun strike was just a second earlier, but a bit too late for mid one. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. It's um sort of like the mind games to go uh, that have, they've gone through in this game are pretty interesting. Having the last game where they get stomped pretty hard, having the drow strat coming back and picking it again, Seeker going for the same heroes, but knowing that they just made a few key mistakes and they can play the lineup a little bit better and still win the game with the same Drow Ranger strat. They're not the exact same heroes, but a very similar strategy and just playing it a lot better this time in the game. Being uh, being slightly in Flipside's favor is still very close, but they're in a better position as their heroes are, are better whenever they're you know, behind or even compared to last game. Oh, poor MP. <laughs> <laughs> Even just the laning phase setup uh, changes the game quite a bit, where MP, you know, was, what was it, last game? They had the Juggernaut, right, as the active core. This time around, it's the Lifestealer. And this guy still is just sitting on Armlet. They haven't had the successful pickoffs that they did last time around against the Drone Ranger lineup, and it's very clearly being uh, a pain in MP's ass. He isn't able to make the comeback and get that nice desolator timing around 20, 25 minutes, 26 minutes. He's only sitting at just a Mythful Hammer and 1,300 gold. Yeah. With the Yules now as well on Quap, um, Vax does jump in, can Yules him, stop him from attacking him. So the spins don't come out and just help his teammates from getting bursted. Um, he's really the only one that's there. It's, it's still very, very easy to burst that is a you know high priority target. So if they don't find this Quap, fights are pretty difficult because they have mechanisms to save everybody else with the Yules, the Nightmare, and just counter initiating, so. The smoke up by Flipside, and they will sweep on through the ancient area. Hope to be able to catch someone. It looks like instead they're just gonna go for a back door on that tier one tower. Not trying to delay too much. <laughs> like how these two blinking heroes though, Always operating as mobile wards while the Drow Ranger finds the prey in the tier one. Yeah, scouting around for the wards with the gem. Really, really nice early gem pickup. Cutting down on their vision because they are so reliant on knowing where the heroes are so they can get these axe jumps to take the fights. But without that, it's very easy for flip side to, to get the better initiation. Yeah, and it's it's not just knowing where the heroes are at, right? It's it's about knowing where the heroes are at and, and if that hero that you're going to jump on has any backup behind them because they've got really good counters especially now with some of the item pickups by the queen of pain like that yule scepter you mentioned and then the faces void with this blink dagger chronosphere if you make the rhine kind of uh call and fest jump you're just 
putting two of your cores into a chronosphere potentially. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's very very hard to to play the game like that. But that's why the void pick coming in really really nice, just sort of stopping them secret from making any aggressive moves without many aggressive moves, because they're always scared of flipside being S five, which they have been S five quite a bit of the game, but still farming decently and keeping the game very close. Secret. They see a uh, couple of heroes at bottom lane, I think. Or maybe they haven't. Maybe Flipside has just been hiding behind the tower. Queen of Pain shows herself now. But Secret, they've already set up at the top lane. They would clear through this jungle. Maybe set up for a tier 2 push, anticipating Flipside to go for the bottom tier 2. See if they can make a trade-off without actually having a fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mid one is definitely Secret's bright spot right now. 16k net worth has the Ags online, 1.5k gold as well, so... Has a lot of teamfight potential, but this Lifestealer is seriously a liability at this point. Only 8k net worth, can't even burst heroes that well anymore. A lot of armor on the Drow, the Ghouls on the Cop. And if that hero can't burst heroes down, especially if it's a lineup with the Ice Arrows, the Bane Disables, Earth Spirit stuff, if he doesn't kill people during Rage, he just gets kited super easily and doesn't have that big of a game impact. Well, flip sign tactics don't actually get the better of this exchange so far. They just took one tier two for two as Secret pushed in both mid as well as top lane without really putting anybody in potential danger. But flip sign tactics looks like they're going to try and poke high ground and at least for Secret back inside their base, get a little map control for themselves. Failing an initiation from Secret, though, they may just take a full tier three. Yeah, taking that over that range grip with the HOD and putting it into the base so they could see when people were TPing in, if the axe was there yet, so we could get some free hits in. Really nice, uh, small play there. Able to get that tower down, so now pushing the base much easier. And the Drow still full HP. It's gonna be harder to go. Oh, Chronosphere oh. actually goes out. Looks like they caught Puppy. They did not manage to get Forev, though. He still managed to blink forward, but it doesn't matter. As now MP pops out, but it's straight into the Fiend's grip. Vanscore once again in masterful position of this game will manage to counter Team Secret's aggression. Two of the cores down, one of them has buyback. MP does not, though, and this may be Flipside taking a late range of racks. We're going to see Flipside actually trying to retreat now after the buyback of Forev. He managed to get the call on Roger. Doesn't get the Culling Blade this time around. They get one support, but they need a whole lot more. Cedoy, he sunned the side. They managed to get the Ghoul Scepter, and that's going to be a Drow Ranger, a big pickoff. If it was just Roger for the buyback on Forev, that would have been well worth it for Flipside. But now they've lost the Void, they've lost the Earth Spirit, and finally the Drow Ranger. The push is still coming in. The melee racks need some help, though. Looks like they will be there in time to prevent the melee racks from going down to the creeps. Yeah, also losing the gem off the Void, so huge there. Secret's actually going to be able to move out, get some of those wards down, and actually have space to farm on the map again, and you know maybe set up for these fights. The life stealer is still dying early on in that fight, so it's still mid one being the very very farmed hero on everyone else much more. Mid one, don't do it, don't do it. Vanscore's here to counter you. Oh no. He fell for the bait. Mid one tries to go for the solo kill on Tame My Wild. Now mid one has to make a desperate escape, but he's good. No counter vision is out from flip side. He gets a nice tornado before the disables come out. He's still going to try and fight this one. He's got some backup coming in. He baits a little bit. Now the relocate in. Forev goes for the call, misses out. Now he's orchided up, unable to stop Roger from retreating. Tame My Wild takes a good amount of magic damage. Looks like Roger's still going to be the pick, though. Secret. Somehow, mid one went from a terrible position, falling into a trap set by Flipside, to actually being able to get a pick thanks to some quick reactions with the Invoker. Yeah, I didn't quite have the Fiend's grip up still in cooldown for 20 or 30 more seconds, so no real way to lock him down, Earth Spirit not near, so just sort of waddles away, hops the Ghost Walk, comes back in. Really nice read there to realize, hey, I can go back in, we can get a free kill, and the track gold, every little bit helps. Yeah, it seems like even the the team was a little bit surprised by the aggression from Midwan. They were making their rotation in with Forever and MP, but a pilot dies relocate was a little bit a little bit slow. Still it was managed also to get more on the defensive side, not yeah, so true. deep in. 
Oh, the call comes out. They're going to go straight for Cedoy, but a Chronosphere is here. Locking down two two cores, but can they actually keep Cedoy alive? They managed to get the Orchid out, preventing the Cooling Blade, but MP still gets the damage. Nice tornado coming on through. It's going to be able to land a huge meteor onto the Bane, as well as the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain blinks out, but Roger is left in the tail end of that damage. Will still go down A relocate forward, but Shotchlow, thanks to his mobility of Blink and Time Walk, will get away until Midwan says hello. He's got the Yule Scepter. Cold Snap preventing the Time Walk away for a second. He still gets the the distance, but Secret just keep on trucking on through. They tank the tier 3 tower, be damned, they go for a jump away, but it's still, the shuriken follows through, Midwan claims that kill, and jumps for even more, Tame My Wild, right in front of his fountain though, he'll fight Midwan, that orchid, still though, Secret come out big, they're gonna be able to get the tier 3 tower, nobody's gonna be back up for another 10 seconds, and still another 20 left on the draw ranger, and even then, they'd have to buy back on the faceless void. In 15 seconds to have their full five-man crew up to contest this push, it's looking like Secret will get the lane of Rax. Yeah, when the Draw Ranger falls, they really just don't have that much damage. The Quap only having her spells, and they all have high enough HP counts where they can't get bursted down by just the spells anymore, so... No real damage inside the Chrono. Melee Rax, is Secret sticking around too long? They've got the ranged as well. MP. He starts making his way out. Flipside, we're hoping to be able to delay his retreat long enough for the Faceless Void to come into the fight, but not going to happen. Range Rex stays alive. Just 50 HP either way, though. The important Rax is down for Secret. Yeah, take my wild actually going for a Dragonlance. You can sort of see how they're feeling. They they know that as the game goes later and later, Secret's eventually going to get items on their cores. Mid one being super farmed, and they're just going to be able to kill the Strow. With the, uh, with the Axe Calls, you can't avoid Axe Calls forever, you know, and you can't play perfect, and so... Trying to go into more damage items, but just a little bit too late at this point. Um, they really, really need to get perfect initiations and have Seed Oil live, but it's hard versus the Axe Calls, the Invoker Spells, the Life Stealer just running at you non-stop. 23 to 29, 35 minutes in, almost a 10k lead here from Secret, about 8,000 net worth lead right now, and a 2,500 experience lead. For them, they've turned this game to their favor quite sharply with a couple of pickoffs and a push into mid lane, and they look to actually close out this game if they get the right kind of initiation here at bottom, but flip side, they do seem kind of aware of the potential jump here. Cedoy pops his Manta. That's just going to be more targets for Ferev. He does not have the Life Stealer inside of him, it looks like. Cedoy pops the BKB and now turns with the Fiend's Grip and kills Ferev farther down. Hops out, but straight into the Chronosphere he goes. MP, a bad time to leave, as now he's going to be caught by yet another ult. And now the Yule Scepter on Pilai Dai stops the relocate as he attempted to save MP. Flipside will get a third kill. Secret were so close to being able to close out this game potentially, but now they've given fresh life to Flipside. Yeah, Rev just going a little too over aggressive and them getting the really, really nice crone on the life sealer on the back end. Everybody just being too far away and not being able to blow up the draw within the duration. It has a BKB now, so if they don't kill him during that time or get him low enough to where he can be right clicked down, he sort of just just falls. Another time walk away. Vanscore blinks forward. They don't have any counter vision though. Actually, they've got a dust on Roger, but mid one is far and well away. I was just about to say, come on, flip side, get with the story. You know mid one. After a fight is over like that, nobody is safe. If mid one's still alive, you guys break apart. He's always gonna go for one of those extra picks. Mid one's gonna go run straight into the Tame My Wild and immediately pops out the Force Spirits, unable to get the Cold Snap down in time. He gets Orchid at first, but now the call comes down. Cooling Blade sure to come in, but the Silence first, and they will get the Queen of Pain, but not the extra movement speed to be able to save the Invoker. Forev is eventually beaten to a pulp as Cedoy comes in with the Manta, but it costs them two kills already. Two cores for a core and a support, not a bad trade off for Flipside, but they're not in a position where they can actually take control of this game. In fact, Mid one going for a buyback here. That is an odd one, especially since there is no buyback on for Rev. Everything to be able to ensure that they can get this this Roshan into their control while the Chronosphere is down, I guess. Yeah, um, it is it is worth it uh, whenever you do that because then you have the Roshan. So it's not like you're in danger of dying and them having this wing condition anymore. And, uh, and you don't want Flipside to take it because that is one of their only routes back into this game is getting the Roshan. So you can't jump the draw anymore, and secrets sort of have a uh, don't have a way to initiate these fights. But with the Aegis, they can still jump the draw and blow her up, jump the other heroes, and uh, and the game remains in their control. Yeah, nicely, uh, 
Like, that was a very quick decision by Secret to be able to see that opening and be like, hey, if they don't have Chronosphere, they won't be able to contest Roshan. Let's buy back, get the Aegis into the hands of mid one. And that just takes away that potential opportunity for Flipside. And having a second life in the Invoker in a team fight, that certainly doesn't hurt either. That being said, Shotslow does pick up a fresh item after so long operating on just a Blink Dagger and of Lads. You finally get a Manta, so a little bit of damage coming out from this offlaner from Flipside. They certainly need it as they are coming a little bit lacking here at 38 minutes with a Dro Ranger and Queen of Pain operating as their main cores. They're inevitably going to start dropping off around this time. Yeah, an interesting pickup. The life still are actually going for a halberd. So another, as the Strauss BKB ticks lower and lower and lower, eventually going to have a really nice way to shut her down. And also, a lot of the damage of Flipside is physical. The Drow's right clicks, the Quap getting some high damage in because of the Drow Aura. And the Void as well only does damage through right clicks. So a little unconventional, but increases survivability a whole lot and makes it much harder to kite him. Yeah, I like the... I mean, it's a cheap source of evasion, right? MP, he's certainly not... Uh... He's certainly not drowning in gold, that's for sure. He's had a tough game pretty much all game, starting from the laning phase, and hasn't really made that full progression into a leading core. So having some, some cheap survivability is sure to help in the team fights that are important right here, right now. 39 minutes in, Team Secret, they're pushing forward pretty aggressively. Tabilai die. He's actually the one to push out the top lane while the rest of the heroes are off map. They've got the Infested Ferev Axe. Sweeping over into the mid lane, seeing if he can catch Cedoy. They do have him. They are going to be able to make the jump and instantly kill Cedoy. The response is just not fast enough from Flipside. They finally do get the Chronosphere, and they're looking to be able to bring down these heroes, but do they actually have enough damage to relocate out? And they're going to be able to keep MP alive. Maybe not for Ev. He's orchid it up. A little bit more damage from Tame My Wild, and he does live. The magic damage coming out is not going to be good enough. They bottle him back up, and Flipside, they didn't actually lose Cedoy. How the hell did Cedoy get out of there? What? Yeah, he was like 13 HP or something. He got slept and then forced away BKB so the Dire didn't kill him and wow. barely lived. I, I just saw his, his health bar disappear during this leap, so I thought, oh, he must be dead. What a save there from the Bane Vance core. Very clutch, as that obviously would have been a huge win for Secret. They'd gotten away, big ultimates blown, and a uh, Drone Ranger kill up. But as it is, looks like they're only going to get the Tier 3 tower for now. Flipside are able to hold ground. But the Chronos here is down, and Team Secret may still try and force this fight. Yeah, Axe getting bots, so Secret is very, very down to push here. The Invoker still has Aegis, so he can just sort of walk up on the high ground with these buildings. Not much Flipside can do about it. Chronos here not up for another 40 seconds. No Fiend's Grip either. They're going to go for a sleep on the Ferev, trying to slow down this push. The Melee Rax is almost gone here. The Glyph is eventually going to wear out. The Regen's not fast enough. The melee rax goes down to one swipe from MP and a right click from the Invoker. Secret, happy with that exchange. The bottom lane pushing in. It looks like they're going to back themselves up now. One melee rax up once again. Yeah, mid one being cheeky, just sort of getting in their heads, messing with his quap, throwing sun strikes. Really just been very, very flashy this game, making a lot of cool plays, getting some pickoffs, and just being a thorn in flipside side. Oh, the relocate in. They've got a Chronosphere in just one more second, but Shotslow, he jumps in for the time walk, won't be able to get the Chronosphere out now, tries desperately, but the cold snap, it's too much. MP, he takes out the Void, and now no Chronosphere to be able to hold down that Invoker means MP is just able to go straight for Roger, and Flipside, they've blown some serious ultimates as well as now a BKB out from Cedoy. They're rapidly trying to retreat, but Ferev is hot in the case, mid one, two. He throws out a blind tornado, unable to catch the members of Flipside, but you know, Secret, they see weakness right now and they're going to try and take that net next objective unfortunately the tier 2 is still alive at bottom lane so they can't take that final lane of Rex so instead they'll just get the range tracks at top lane and wait for the push on bottom yeah but one also sort of weakening these tier 4s a little bit so just standing around in their base almost taunting them asserting their dominance and just keeping flip side in the base not too much they can do right now the invoker still having Aegis having the Octarine course so just a flurry of spells that he has at his disposal. Deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole we go. Or maybe it's actually going up, sorry. Secret up to 10k net worth lead. Forgot their Radiant side. Secret uh, only holding a slight experience lead. But again, Team Secret have the better late game, right? So those numbers mean all the more when you consider Secret 
All right, good control of this game. Have two lanes of racks, full lanes down, and are just left with a pesky tier two tower before they can siege the bottom lane. That being said, their Aegis is now worn out. They're still going to try and find the initiation. They just warded up. Shachel immediately kills oh. that ward, but Ferev, oh, that was a whiff there. He tried to go for the blink call. The Tono does manage to land, but he still managed to relocate out. Bounty Hunter's down. He drops his gem. MP with the double damage tries to go for Cedo, but the damage is too much. This fight inside the jungle turns well into the hands of Flipside as they catch two and going to be able to get a third now as Pylai die, unable to do anything about his relocate. So Flipside win the defensive fight. They can now push forward, try and be on the aggressive, control the mid and top lanes. But are they going to be able to push for that much more? Can they force out any buybacks or even at least take a tier two mid? We'll have to see. Yeah, super nice read from Flipside and Shotchlo being up on that hill with the gem. So whenever they see those heroes, Forever missing the call. His blink might have been cooled on or he might have just misclicked or something. But wasting his call on the two-man chrono, the relocate out saving Forever, but Pilot Eye paying the price and MP as well, just going in a little bit late, sort of some miscommunication and Flipside are going to get some buildings off of it. Yep, tier 2 mid is going to be the first victim here of Flipside. Maybe the only one. Looks like they're going to try and poke at high ground with the Manta Illusions, but of course with 10 more seconds left on both the Wisp and the Lifestealer, they're not actually going to put any heroes in danger. Flipside back up to their side of the map. Yep. A BKB now as well on mid one, so much more difficult to kill. The Drow's, I mean, uh, the Cold Arrows and the Shadow Strikes, their Spirit Disables, not near as effective on the Invoker, so they're going to have to commit the Chrono or the Fiend Script to kill him, otherwise he's just going to run rampant. And the Cold Snap has really, really been working wonders in these fights, keeping the Void from getting the Chrono off. Do you think mid one is public enemy number one for flip side? Do you think he's the target that they should be looking to try and chrono and burst down first? Um, I don't really know if flip side can be the aggressors. I think they have to wait for Seeker to make mistakes like they did before and counter initiate because if they do dump, jump in first, the Wisp will be able to save the hero probably. Um, and if not, then they can just jump the heroes and make themselves known because if the Strahl shows herself, then everyone just bull rushes her. So I think they have to wait for Seeker to make mistakes. Um, or botch initiation like they did before and uh, play around that. Flipside are going to smoke up. Are they going to wrap around and try and catch Secret when they go for this tier 2? Not even wrapping. They're just moving straight forward. Secret, though, have already backed out. Not sure if they made the read on that smoke or if they just want to take a bit more time to farm and wait for the next Roshan. We'll have to see. Flipside, though, are going to push forward. Double blinks out. Flipside are not able to get any damage and completely with the uh, the Seek and Destroy mission here from Roger, trying to find anybody here on the side trees. But now Flipside, they're going to be the ones who could be initiated on. Shotzlo is going to try and take out that ward, but it's going to be Cedoy. He's initiated on, on Forev. Vanscore does manage to save him, though, in the Fiend's Grip. That's the mistake they were looking for with the Chronosphere onto two. They can go for so much more. Pylai die tethers into the Chronosphere. Tornado just trying to disrupt this damage as best as possible. Our MP still in trouble. Pops a Rage, turns, and fights up against the Queen of Bane, but he had to blink up. Id one. He's the one manning up. He goes straight for Cedoy with the Disarm still up. Yule Scepter, and all of a sudden he realizes this is no longer a man fight. He can take. Flipside control the invoker and bring him down mid one goes down for the first time in such a long long time hundred seconds down a flip side there is a real opening that they can possibly take some control of this game they're gonna go first for Roshan and secret Oh, they're going to fight this one. Puppy's leading the way, but Forev, he's got the double call. He's going to be able to grab Cedoy. Asleep goes down, saving Cedoy's life, but he's already so low. He pushes them back, tries to get the distance. The heal goes down. Eventually, though, he will drop mass buybacks coming out. Good Flip night. side, bop three, and one comes out from Secret, as well as two, actually. Mid one also buying back there. This next fight, if we have a fight around the Roshan, this next fight could be final for both teams. Yule Scepter catching Tame My Wild. He has no BKB. He's going to be caught by the call. Vanscore saves him once again with a sleep. It doesn't stop. Deafening Blast, but he blinks himself away. A time dilation from Shotchlo, and now he jumps forward, hoping to be able to catch MP, but the Rage is still up. MP turns, fights, and the time walk away from the Faces Void will call a short, short break on this team fight. They have to back up and deal with their tier four towers that are currently being pushed in from top and middle lane. Team Secret, they have the opening to go Roshan now if they want to. 
but they, there's a chance they may get caught in the pit, so instead they're going to go for a smoke and push through into the secret shop. Cedoy's sitting there. He's going to pop the smoke, but they already managed to get the call. Attempted man to dodge isn't going to make it, and Cedoy, he's gone. And already, Chronosphere, oh, Chronosphere is actually coming back up. They can actually fight this one. Chronosphere into two, but Queen of Pain, nowhere to be found. They get a Fiend's Grip onto MP, but they need some physical damage, and they just don't have it. Flipside, stop. Cold Snap on Advanced Core brings stop, uh, Quick Stopper there. To the Fiend's Grip, Vanscor trying to make his way back to the Tier 3 Tower after sleep, but Midwan catches him, blinks forward with the Ice Wall, 80 seconds down on two cores, and it looks like Tame My Wild may be falling as well. Yule Scepter has a blink up in a second, Forever unable to get the call, but the slow is still there. Midwan, the Beast, a triple kill, almost gets the quad, a teammate takes it in front of him, but still... Midwan jumping forward, dominating this fight, and Team Secret will go straight for the Tier 4s with no more buybacks left on flip side. They call it GG. Congratulations to Team Secret, who will be one of the European teams qualifying for the Dota Pit Land Final. Yeah, Midwan really, really showing off his prowess this series, playing extremely well every game. The TA game is a little rough for Secret as a whole, and not a great looking start, but the rest of the game is Midwan. Really, really just uh, getting sacked a couple of the games by his team, but not dying, playing really safe and catching up and just having a huge impact in every single game. A nice climactic end to our game number four. This team secret, they've been nicely controlling that game for a while, but it all came down to that big buyback team fight. In the end, team secret are going to be taking this series three to one against Flipside, but you got to give Flipside props for a team that didn't even get invited to the qualifier and will have to go through the opens. They made one hell of a showing here in this Dota pit group. Yeah, definitely showing they have the stuff to uh, to compete with the, the Tier 2 European teams. You know, definitely one of the up-and-comers. So, everybody will exp after this uh, performance, will be expecting them to make it through the opens. We'll see if they can uh, perform. Yeah, hopefully, and we'll see if they do make it through the Opens, how far they make it through the actual qualifier. Of course, they have a chance to meet Team Secret there again and maybe get some vengeance as the Boston Major qualifiers are not too far away. But in the meantime, congratulations to Team Secret. Props to Flipside for what they've done in this group so far. And that's going to bring a close to our series for today. The next European group is going to be starting up as well as the CIS group is going to be going on for the Dota Pit. So there is a whole lot more of Dota Pit qualifiers that are going to be happening. I hope you guys will tune in for all of that. But for now, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. I'm Dota Capitalist. You can follow me at Dota Capitalist. Follow CCNC at CCNC and C Dota. Is that it for your Twitter? Dota 2. Dota 2. Go, go follow CCNC, man. Go follow him. Great co-caster. Great player. We'll see you guys around next time on Dota Pit. Bye, guys.